Hey, so I'm going to learn some math and history, and we are going to look at transitive and substitution properties. So in the last video, we've been looking about multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition properties. But hold on, there's more properties. So, we're going to look at transitive and substitution properties. And one of them is a little bit different, but the substitution property is a very useful one because you can conclude and conclude and conclude even more. Let's look at the transitive property. If angles or segments are congruent to the same congruent angles or segments, that they are congruent to each other. So that is saying, if angles or segments are congruent to the same angle or segment that's also congruent, then it also means both of them are also congruent. Here's an example where we can see that in a proof. So given F, G, and K, J, are congruent. So I'm going to put an orange line. F, G, and K, J are congruent. G, H, and K, J are also congruent. So you kind of see where this is going, where it says angles or segments are congruent to the same congruent angle or segments, then they are congruent to each other. So this is going to be congruent to this. We have to prove that line KG is an angle bisector and it bisects FH. We'll have to prove that. We have a given and a statement. Let's start with the given. So we already know given is we can literally write everything out. So we're going to say FG is congruent to KJ and GH is congruent to KJ. So, two figures that are congruent is going to be congruent, or another piece of set is these two are congruent, but this piece right here is congruent to this, and is also congruent to that. Is right here an angle bisector? So, all that stuff was given to us. We're going to put the proofs over here because it's more easy to understand and it's also going to help us later. So, from the diagram, it also explains that since FG is congruent with KJ and GH is congruent with KJ and these all three are the same size, we can say that FG is congruent to GH. So we're going to write that up here. FG is going to be congruent with GH. And that is going to say transitive property. The reason why we did that is it literally says it up here. If angles or segments are congruent to the same congruent angles or segments, then they are congruent to each other. This and this is congruent to that. That is congruent to these two each other. And since we have understand that FG is a segment and GH is a segment and G is a midpoint, we can say that G is a midpoint. And what I'm going to say is two congruent segments that is marked will bring you a midpoint. So now we can understand and explain that line KG is going to bisect FH as a segment. So KG is going to bisect FH. And we can explain 
a line passing through the midpoint with two congruent segments is going to explain KG is an angle bisector going through FGH. And that is how we use the transitive property. Let's look at the other one that we're going to look at. The substitution property. Okay, so the substitution property is a little bit different. Instead of identifying congruent segments or angles that are congruent to another set of congruent or segment angles, well, here's the other one. Substitution property. If two or segments are congruent, if two angles or segments are congruent, then they can replace each other. What's that saying is, uh-oh, we have a problem right here. If angle 1 is complementary to angle 2, complementary angles will bring you 90 degree angles, or a right angle, or both, then we conclude about angle 3, that angle 3 is going to be congruent with angle 2. Because we understand this is going to be congruent. So that is an example of the substitution property. This one, the lines don't have to connect. But you can realize that you can substitute them and make them congruent. Here's an example where we would do that into a proof. Alright, so given to us. Angle 1 is going to be congruent with angle 3. So 1 is going to be congruent with angle 3. We want to prove that angle 3 is going to be supplement to angle 2. So that means it makes a straight line. And also adds up to 180 degrees. So let's get started. These two should be switched around. So we're going to put statement right here. Because that is what we're literally stating. And we're going to put our reason right here on why we stated that statement. So we're going to put angle 1 is going to be congruent with angle 3. And that was literally given to us. Now, after we done that, we can say that on here, we can realize that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary to each other. And we can also say that supplements are straight angles. And we can also say that ABC is a straight angle. So what I'm going to say is ABC is straight. And we're going to say we assumed it. Assumed from diagram. In geometry, you can assume straight angles when they're really, really straight. We now can say that angle 1 is sub to angle 2. The reason why we have to say ABC is straight is because if we identify it first, we can conclude that angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2. If we say angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2 before the straight, then people will, won't understand what that means. Because it's not in order. We're going to say straight angles is going to bring you to sup angles. We're going to say that. And last but not least, we can conclude that angle 3 angle 3 is going to be congruent to angle 2. The reason why we said that is we said it earlier in the video that 1 is and 3 are both supplements to 180. 180 degrees is going to bring you a straight angle. And we can say that if 1 and 3 are supplements, 1 and 2 are supplements, 2. 2! But then we can also say that 2 and 3 are congruent 
because they're both the same supplements of angle 1 trying to add up to 180 degrees. So we can literally say substitution property. I'm going to write the letter P to make it easier for us. So that's what we just did. The substitution property is two angles or segments that are congruent, they can replace each other. And since we understood that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplements, and angle 1 and angle 2 are supplements, these two have to be the same and congruent. Now we have proved it. And that is how we can use the transitive and substitution properties. Thank you for watching Taoping Your Life the Math Industry. Like and subscribe. And if you ever get confused, transitive properties are only if things are congruent, like angles and segments. Substitution properties are in case things are not congruent, but you have to find the figures that are congruent. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.